Warning! The following video contains scenes that are graphic in nature. Some viewers may find this disturbing. The following video is posted for educational and entertainment purposes only. However, if you are a regular subscriber to Cody Bass channel, you'll find this normal. So enjoy! Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Look at that. Didn't expect to see that. Look at the end of that drive shaft. Completely snapped off up into the power head. So that would tell me the lower unit's probably fine. But the drive shaft, that's a different story. Look at that. Yeah, they hit it. They hit something high speed and broke that shaft. Well, interesting. So that's why there was no overboard discharge is because the tip end of the drive shaft is up in the crank and so when the engine runs the engine spins but the drive shaft just sitting there so we got to get that out of there okay so now we've got the other part of the drive shaft stuck in the crank. This is a welding rod covered with electrical tape. You can see it's fat right there. I welded two of them together with my wire feed welder. I just put a little bead in there to make sure they have continuity. It's completely wrapped with electrical tape except for that end. You can see there's quarter inch stick in there. What I'm going to do is put this down in there and I'm going to set it down in the hole. There's a hole about that deep where the crank um, is recessed and the broken part of the drive shaft is in there. Then I'm going to take my welder. I've got it set on a fairly low, now this is my stick arc welder, my 19 and 62 Lincoln Ideal Art 250. And what I'm going to do is, once I got this all set up, I'm going to put the stinger and touch it to here. Hopefully that'll weld that little piece to the crankshaft, being that I've got it set on pretty low amperage, around 50. And uh, hopefully we'll get some stick on there. And then we'll let it cool down, if we get the stick them. And then I'll try and see if I can jimmy that thing out of there. Okay. There's my stinger. Straight up and down and... Now I'm just gonna let it cool down while I hold this straight. Let her cool down. So, I'm going to let that set for a good 3-4 minutes. Let me look down in there. I don't know how good a weld I got. But I'm, I'm dead center on that piece of drive shaft. So I'm going to let that sit down and cool for about 5 minutes. I'll be back. Been about four or five minutes. Let's see. I'm stuck on there pretty good. I can feel it coming up. I'm not out yet. Okay, now I just went out. Let's see if we got her. Oh look. There's the end of my drive shaft welded on my stick that I made. See I used a big fat welding rod and uh, I welded them with my uh, wire feed welder right here. These two big uh, welding rods. It didn't really even burn the tape. See? You can still see I had out of that quarter inch I had quite a bit to go. 
Now, I'll show you. I'll show you! Maybe I will. These welding rods I use. I've done this before, but I ain't never done it on one that, that was this deep down in there, I don't think. Let me get my razor skinner. That, that mercury has a really deep recessed, uh, what you call it, crankshaft end. I don't know what else to call it. That's what it is. Crankshaft end. I might be doing this wrong. Shoot. Here, let me just do the whole daggum length then. I think these are 7018s. They might be 6011s. I can't remember. I don't know if I can. Maybe it did heat up that tape more than I thought it did. Maybe it did. I'm getting it off of there slowly. There's where I bubble gummed them all up with my wire welder just two welding rods and then you do what I did with the stinger and it melts it to the drive shaft and you fish it out of there and you say why now I'm looking at these spines and they are not bent at all so I'm gonna look down in there and you say, well, you're not going to try and weld that thing, are you? Ain't you been watching my channel? Of course we're going to weld it. you got to remember, this was a freebie. You know what a drive shaft for this sucker costs? And welding this thing is not near as complicated as one might think. You just got to come to it at the right angle. That's the hint. You got to come to it at the right angle. This way we can check and see if anything in there is kitty bumped it on my gears and such. But looking pretty good actually. I don't see no internal damage, especially on the the uh, clutch lugs. If you look, here, let me get a pointy thing. I need a pointy thing. We got a point up in here. See, this is where your those dog teeth there. They catch right there, boom, and they look good. And so do here. That's a good sign, especially if I slide this over that way. Here comes some oil. See that? And there goes my pen. So, whoops, sorry. I gotta let this drain anyway. Get my pen before it gets covered up in oil. Put it on the diaper. And then what I'll do is slosh a little old gas in there, probably. I don't see anything wrong in there. Okay. Remember I said it's all about the angle. Well, here's the drive shaft that snapped. Okay. This is a piece of aluminum angle. I cut a divot out there. It's just a little jig I made. And I've welded a few drive shafts with it. I've got a couple of these. And you can see the angle here. Down L-shaped angle. And on, the reason why I like the aluminum is it's a little more rounded in here than are the steel. So then we'll take, and you see that little cutout, that little divot, that, just a little V-notch. I'll take my drive shaft and center it over that V-notch. 
then I'll take where it snapped. That'll all be clamped in there real good with vice grips and C clamps, whatever. And then I will grind this, a trough through all that. Then I will weld it and fill, fill in that trough. And it's important that you cut a bevel in that and get a lot of good steel in the brake. I'm guessing, you can see where I welded it with my stick to pull it out of there. I, I took a file and filed that flush. And uh, you can see where it snapped. It was spinning really good there. You can see how those are all bent. Those aren't going to matter anyway. We're going to lose a little bit. But this don't go all the way into the crankshaft anyway on these things. Um, but this is all going to be ground smooth with weld anyway. I want to favor, when I make my grind in here, I want to favor this in, this side. In other words, just like you were cutting a tree down, I'm going to come in with the, the grinding wheel at an angle like that and not take much at all off of that. Maybe an eighth of an inch at most because I want as much of those splines up in that crankshaft when it's done as possible. So I'll favor this side with my grinder. And when I get it all ground and cleaned up, I'll come back and show you. I'll be back. Okay, now this is kind of a trial run on an old drive shaft that I have, but you can see what I got there. Hopefully, you can see the, the bevel there. Now this was, I cut this drive shaft in two pieces with a hacksaw. And then I made that bevel in there with my angle grinder. Coming in at an angle like that. And now I'm going to fill that in with weld. Once that's filled in with weld and cools down, we'll flip the whole thing, do the other thing. A quarter turn, another quarter turn, and another quarter turn. I'll be back. Okay, I welded the one side, and as you can see now, I've cut almost halfway through that entire two pieces of drive shaft. And that's all going to be filled in with weld. Hopefully you can see that pretty good. Alrighty. I took this old drive shaft here, and you can see I, I cut some slots in it with my uh, angle grinder just so I could test my rods and uh, get my puddle, you know, kind of looking. I, I want the puddle to fill so it's going to be a pretty low setting because I, I want to see what kind of fill I can get on these drive shafts. Um, and this drive shaft, and neither is that when I've tested them with a magnet. They're not stainless. Um, I don't know what they are, but a magnet sure sticks to them. But here's where I chopped its head off here. And if that was that drive shaft, I would do a couple more passes and and then grind it and uh, get it, you know, a little better than that. But it really ain't looking too bad. Um, so that's what I'm going for. I had cut this off with a hacksaw and then put it in my little angle jig. And, she, you know, she's looking pretty good. So, a little more practicing. I practice because I don't do this a lot. I don't weld a lot, period. Because um, hopefully you, you ain't got to do a whole lot of welding on your outboard. You understand this? Yeah. But I'm going to practice, dial in my... Just tweak at my heat and my puddle until I get it right. Then I'll put the, the drive shaft in the jig, um, the 40, and go from there. Okay, here's the 40 drive shaft, the Mercury 40. Now you can see how I beveled it there. At least I'm hoping you can. Can you see how I beveled that? You can see the remaining pieces of the, the uh, where it was twisted on 
this side of the on the right here this side you can see that and now I'll come back and fill that with weld all of that and that's going to give me quite a bit of good spline left I'll be back okay now hopefully whoops I'm hitting the leg of the tripod hopefully you can see here's the bent um, well you can you can hopefully you can see the the line there where it snapped right there and you can see how nice and and straight I've got all this now there's my ugly welds that'll get cleaned up really good and then we'll come over here and once I clamp it that little crack will even push together tighter I'll make my bevel at the bottom side of this mostly and then I'll come in and fill that with weld and I'll cut literally halfway through this drive shaft to get it done Again, I've almost cut through half of the thickness, a little less probably, of the shaft. Don't worry, this will all get cleaned up. And you can see I favored the long side of the shaft, not the, uh, the spline side. So... Now it's time to get to welding that in. Okay, what I'm going to do now is take my die grinder, Diablo, and I'm going to dress up the bottom of the splines. And uh, so I'll just take it and come right in here, line up with a spline, and come down that way. I'll be back. Well, there's my final product. It ain't the prettiest, but it's good and strong because I cut through this, uh, I cut it through right there. I cut it literally almost in half a couple of times. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is grease it up. A lot of times when you pop these drive shafts out, the bearing's going to come out with it. Take you something that looks about like that, piece of wire bent, long screwdriver bent, put the bearing on there, put a bunch of geese on there, and then put it in there. The grease is just so it sticks, and you can get the drive shaft through. I say it so it sticks. There we go. Yeah, put that in there. And then you're basically going to use a screwdriver, a big one, or at least this is what I'm going to do, and it tends to work. Use the big screwdriver. Um, and you can see you got splines on the end of the drive shaft for the pinion gear. I put a little grease on there to help it slide on. And then you're going to slide it down in using the screwdriver to get get it through the bearing and all there now I can see the splines there now I got the bearing in and here's one of the trickier parts is getting the uh, the pinion gear to go on the splines. It's just, you just got to play with it with a screwdriver and whatnot, and you, and you can get it on there. But I'll show you what I got in there. Well, I will attempt to show you what I got. <laughs> I'm hung up here in my air hose. 
can you see in there? Probably not. Face, man. Sorry about that. I have no camera operator. But there is the splines, the end of the drive shaft, and the bearings up in its bearing race. I hope you can see that. I, doing the best I can here, man. Doing the best I can. There you go. Now we gotta get that pinion gear on those splines. What's next? I ain't even got you in the film. Alright. So, that's next is to get the pinion gear. And you may have to pull up on the, the uh, drive shaft some. But it's the same process. You're going to take your pinion gear, put it on something like that, lower it down in there. And now you got to get the flat screwdriver. And now we got to get all this crap together. And it, to me, this is the hardest part. Getting the uh, pinion gear to line up with the shaft. And like I said, you, you'll have to pull it up some. Get the pinion gear to mate with the there the other gear and then get it all back down through there which I just just did now once you get it to where you can see the nut or excuse me the threads for the um now what I do with the nut um this is they, they the nut they use is a special nut it's called a clinch nut and um, so now you've got to get in there and get this nut started and tighten it up and that'll pull everything on up in there together and then you just have to put in your prop shaft and your hub assembly start it yeah okay for uh for getting this clinch nut on, you're going to take you a setup like these long needle nose, and you're going to clamp, you know, grab hold to it, and you you can spin the drive shaft while holding the nut up against it with these and start it that way, and it generally will go on. And then we'll tighten it up with a wrench. Okay, with your top seal that goes down over your drive shaft, put you a little permatex of some kind on there. And you can see these cutaways. That's for your oil to get to your bearing. There's a cutout in the front side there. And you just want to line that up with that. So that the oh, so that your seal gets lubricated. You can use a socket if you get one. Um, that fits on this rim, but don't let it get on this rubber here. I just take a wrench. Seems to wait just fine. Okay, here's the lower unit all put back together. And uh, I got some anti-seize on my splines, a little geese on the... Uh, Shift rod, little geese on the water pickup tube thing, and I put some in the hole for the uh, water tube as well. Hopefully, everything will slide in there somewhat easy. 
Okay. Let's give it a shot. My feener. Get out of there. There we go. Now, I just put gear oil plus a little bit of a. Uh, I put about a quarter cup of Luby Plate 105 in there along with the 80 90 weight gear oil. Now, you wonder. Is there anything else we could do that would probably, you know, protect that welded drive shaft a little bit more? Well, this is the propeller that was on it when they hit whatever they hit. This is an aluminum propeller, and they were moving whenever they hit whatever they hit to get that kinetic wham that sheared that drive shaft. There is something you can do. It's right here. Ooh, see all that pretty geese? See this propeller? This propeller is plastic. I don't know if it's nylon. I don't know what they make them out of. But it's plastic. So if you're moving along really fast like they were and hit whatever they hit, I think one of these plastic propellers might not shear that drive shaft. Instead, it might tear this plasticky four-blade prop up. Maybe.
Well, there we have it. So, is this the way to fix a snapped off drive shaft and outboard? Well, of course not. Um, so why did I even post this video? I posted it because time's been a little bit hard for uh, a lot of people as of late. And, uh, you know, if you're one that counts on an old outboard to put groceries on the table for subsistence, or if you are in whatever situation and, uh, you know, needed to get something to get you across the bay, the river, the lake, the blah, 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 this could be an option. Um, I have done this before with pretty decent results. Um, again, this should be your last result. And in my case, this was a freebie motor. It was given to me. I have spent nothing on it. Um, I did put a prop on it, a plastic prop, which I had out in my prop shack. So, and that came off an old junker to me as well. So, I've got nothing into this. I just wanted to show that with a little jiggy, 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 an angle. You can weld these things back together. And uh, if you take your time, practice your welding a little bit. Um, clamp things down real good and make sure you cut into that metal like I did. Cut down half through the shaft, fill it with weld. Quarter turn, cut down, fill it with weld. Quarter turn. That way where it snapped has got completely new welded steel in there. And, uh, and then grind it down on a bench grinding wheel, nice and level. And uh, in an emergency situation, or if this was all you had available to you, basically everything I did with that was done with some scrap aluminum and hand tools, with the exception of a welder. Any old stick arc welder would probably get the job done. So, this is not how you would do a repair on this motor. It is how you would, uh, in a last ditch situation, um, to get yourself out of a pickle or something if you had access to just a little shop. And um, it is doable. So, am I bruised? Do I look bruised? Well, I know after this video, I'm going to get beaten all to pieces by you guys. But, hey, time's been tough and money's tight in the last couple years I think there's a lot of people probably hurting and so I thought go ahead beat me up it's all right I can take it up big boy um, so the old Merc it shifts it starts it pees that is definitely <laughs> that is definitely one more from Kodiak. Thank you for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.